Okay, so now, um, again, here's what the page is going to look like. I, what I'm going to do is, though, to speed this up, I grabbed uh, some hexadecimal color number uh, numbers for specific colors on the page. So I'm going to use just words to color this page. And so it's going to look, the colors are going to be a little different. If you want to, I'd like you to go to colorlovers.com, and I know you've been there before with other assignments, and grab a palette or different colors to color your page. So I'll just, I'll kind of quicken the pace here, and, and I won't have to type out all these weird, you know, number letter combinations that, that mean a specific color to the computer. So I'm going to go back to my template. Again, I have all the HTML completed, which is pretty quick. Now I'm going to go in between the style tags here, and I'm going to talk to all the elements, including the body tag here, and design all the different parts of my page. So this is the video that's going to be a little bit longer. So I'm going to say, hey computer, I have a body tag down there, and I hit the curly brackets, and notice um, it should create open and close curly brackets, even in caret. Google Carrot should do that also. So the background, I'm going to say, I'm going to just use the word, I'll put teal. Okay, kind of quicken the pace. And what I'm going to do is, by, uh, by default, the width of the page is 100%. I'm going to actually make it 85% of the of device width. Okay. And then also what I'm going to do is, because it's 85%, I'm going to say margin, colon, and the first number will be the number for the top and the bottom. So it's going to create 50 pixels of empty space for the top and the bottom. And then I'm going to hit the space bar and put the word auto. And if you remember, the word auto, uh, because I gave it a width, I can use margin. And the second word is very important because it's going to look at the left and the right. And it's going to basically do it, oh, do all the work for me and keep it in the middle. Okay? So let me just show you. Let's see if it's working here. Yeah. Now you can't tell, but see the empty space here and the empty space here. And notice this empty space and this empty space, they're the same. So it is working. And there's the teal color in the back. All right. So I'm going to go back to coding. We're done with the body. Okay, now the next uh, tag, I like to go from top to bottom. So the next tag under the body tag is the H1 down here. And again, I'm going to say, hey, computer, I have an H1 tag down here, down there. And here's what I want to do. And I'm change the color to um, blue. And the font dash size, we're going to use what's called EM. And if you remember... If we've used it before, uh, if we haven't, EM stands for numerical measure. Whatever normal the computer recognizes as normal size for a heading one, that's one EM. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 2.5 EM, two and a half times the normal size of a large heading tag size. And then I'm going to say font-family. I'm going to choose the type of font. Now, here's the thing. Um, I'm choosing a font that's generally on all computers, which is Georgia. And then um, I'm going to say margin-bottom. And when I made this page, I found that I had to take some um, empty space away from the the, just below the large heading to bring to basically suck everything up closer to the large heading. That's why I'm saying margin dash bottom colon minus 0.5 em. Okay. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is talk to the uh, H3 tag, the smaller heading below the H1, and I'll say color green. I have no idea why, but Again, you'll grab hexadecimal color numbers and make it look a lot better than, than mine. And I'm going to say font-size, and we're going to go with 2EM. And then the font family is going to be the same family as the H1 Georgia.
All right. Now, I'm going to hit the return key, and now I'm going to talk to the first div, and the first div is has an ID name of ID name of one. So what we're going to do is to talk to an ID name, you have to use a hashtag or a number sign before the name you gave it. So I'm going to say number sign one, and I'm going to put a border on it. I'm going to say border, and then I'm going to tell it how many pixels wide to be, 3px. I'm going to hit the space bar and tell it what kind of border to be, solid. And then I'm going to tell it what color. So we'll use um, reds just so you can see it. Okay. So let me show you kind of what that looks like. Okay. So again, there's the border. We haven't talked to the image. We haven't floated the text up. We haven't changed the paragraph. But here's the border of the div. Okay. And it's starting to look a lot better. And then I'm going to create, see how, um, oh, see how tight this is? I want some empty space so the border doesn't hit right at the edge of the image or the paragraph or whatever. I'm going to create some empty space, space inside the border. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, hit the return key, drop my cursor in between, still in between the curly brackets, talking to the div 1. And I'm going to say padding. 50 px for which pixels and that's going to be on all sides and then just to show you see how it's much more much more empty space it's easier to view and uh, it'll look a lot better when we're done okay so um, I'm going to do that and then I'm going to copy this oh sorry Go Command C or Control C, and then I'm going to go Control V, and I'm going to make this a two. Um, so I'm going to keep the same um, the same color and all of that. Um, I'm going to create create the same padding, but what I am going to do is. I'm going to tell it to not have a border on the top. And let me show you why. I'm going to save it before I do it. And I'm going to go see how the border is double the width of this border and this border and this border and this border. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it, hey, I want a border around number two. But I don't want a border on the top of it. I want it on the, the right and the bottom and the left, but not the top. So in, in web design, I can say border-width and a colon. And I'm going to give it four values. The first value is going to be 0, which is the top. The second value is going to be 3px. The third value is going to be for um, the bottom, 3px. And the fourth value is going to be for the left. So the, the three, this is for the top, 0, takes away. This is for the right. This is for the bottom. And this is for the left. Now you'll see that if I look at it again, See how it's all the same width now? Just a little trick. All right. So I'm going to go back to my coding. And I'm going to highlight number two, including the closing curly bracket, and paste it and change this to three. My voice is going here. And then. Um, I'm going to do the same thing for four. Paste another one, change this to number four. Okay. And we are done. Let me just show you again. 
So all the borders and all the divs are basically done. All right. So now we're going to go back to this, and I'm going to uh, just move down the line here. Now we're going to talk to the picks. So we gave each image of Coco a different class name. Pick one, pick two, pick three, and pick four. And we're going to talk to those and float them left and right, if you remember how to do that. So I'm going to say pick, um, pick one. And on pick one, we're going to float left. That creates empty space so the paragraph can come up around it. And then we're going to create some padding so we can color the padding and make a frame around the picture. So padding is going to be 25 pixels on either side. And then we're going to say margin dash top. So we're only going to talk to the top margin above the image. And I'm going to say minus 0.5 EM. That's going to move it up a little bit. And then we're going to actually do a margin dash right. So the right of the image, we're going to add a little bit of empty space to kind of create some empty space between the image and the paragraph. And then we're going to do a border radius. And that's going to be 10px. And that's going to create a rounded corner on our, on our frames. And then the background color, which is going to color the frame, <coughs> I'll say... Um, Tan. Again, you can use a hexadecimal color number, but let me check this. I always like to do one and check it. Okay. So there it is right there. And again, don't worry about this right now. The fact that it's kind of coming out of the, the div. All right. We're not, we're not done yet. Don't worry about that. Um, so now I'm going to go back to my coding. I'm going to copy this. and paste it. I'm going to change it to pick two. And then I'm going to float right. And um, instead of margin right, again, because the image is going to be on the right, and we want to create some empty space on the left, I'm going to create margin dash left. Just change it from left to right here. And everything else will be the same. Okay, now if you want, the easiest thing to do here is highlight pick one and then copy that for pick three. And the reason is because pick three is going to be on the same side, so nothing will change. Okay, and then for pick four, I'm going to highlight pick two because again, we're going to float uh, pick four to the right, and that's what pick two is doing. and just change it to pick four and then again don't don't worry about some of the divs collapsing once you once we uh, enlarge the, the paragraph text which we're going to do next uh, everything will come into play all right so now I'm going to go back to the coding and talk to each paragraph so I'm going to say hey Computer, there's something called one down there, and inside of one, there's a p tag, and here's what I want to do. So I'm telling it, hey, look inside div one, and there's a p tag down there, and here's how I want to change that specific p tag. So I'm going to say font dash size 1.4 em, and I'm going to say color. And I'll just say uh, white. Again, you can use a hexadecimal color number. And then the font family is Georgia. And then the last thing I'm going to do is indent the first line of the paragraph. So it's text dash indent. 
and I'll say uh, 60, 60 px. So I, again, I want to just see if that first one is is working. Uh huh. There it is. Okay. And all we're going to do is we are going to copy that. We're going to paste it, make it a two. Um, copy it again, make it a three. And then one more time. Copy it and make it a four. All right. And now I'll get rid of some of this space. Uh, the computers don't recognize any empty space. Like if I had this, it was it was fine. It would not recognize it. But I like to kind of bring it up a little bit. Let me go back. And here is the finished page. And notice, because I took away um, some of the empty space on top of each image, it kind of pulled it up so it was pretty in line, pretty much in line where, where I wanted it uh, with the paragraphs. So uh, your finished page should look very similar to mine. Again, you can definitely go to Color Lovers. I want you to go to Color Lovers and get used to grabbing hexadecimal color numbers instead of words for colors. All right, so that is it.